Lord Jesus, amen. There's a land that is far than day, and by faith we can see it afar. Let us pray to Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this Lord's day you give us on this Father's Day, Lord. And I pray that all the fathers out there are happy, joyful, and loving. And content with the way their house is going, the way their children was raised, and I pray that they are content in the Lord by Him showing them how to do all those things. The mercy and the grace can only come from God, Lord, and I thank you for it, so we can give love to our children, so we can be better fathers, and so we can control ourselves in a way that will be pleasing to you, Lord. The abundance of fine mercy that you give each and every day, Lord, let us not take it for granted. In Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. 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 Deuteronomy, chapter 6. Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thy city sitteth, sits in the house. And when thou walk by the way, and when thou lie down, and when thou rise up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thy eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house, and on thy gates. And that shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swore unto thy father. Amen. The houses be full of good things. Verse 11 says. Verse 13 says, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name and his name only. Amen. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. And you shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. Okay. This verse in this chapter is talking about how we should be fathers to our children. How we should be fathers as our father is to us. Amen. He's the guy. He's the ultimate one that should make decisions in our lives, in our minds, in our hearts to be able to raise our children in a godly fashion. Amen? We love that. We say we love that God with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. Amen? And we do. But at times we, we mistreat Him. At times we go, at times we go against the grain. At times... We say that we don't think he is doing and making the right choice for our lives at a specific time. Amen? All the things that my daddy, I don't know about you, but all the things that my daddy instilled in me. He tried to make choices for me. Good choices. Right choices. But I fell by the wayside at times and I wouldn't listen. So in turn, I was telling him, he don't know what he's talking about. But each and every time through life, I have learned, my God, he was right all along. And I failed him. Instead of adding confusion into the mix, what should I do? Bring the love in. And say, he is the one and only Father. He, there is no one else that I can I can draw strength from. There's nobody else that I can draw knowledge from. There's nobody else that I can be with that will take care of me like he can. 
My daddy, my daddy's gone to be with the Lord right now. But one day I'm going to see him. But in my heart, he's still alive. In my heart, he's still telling me what he did back in the day when I was five years old, walking down through that cat pack in that middle, following him, looking at his footprints in the dirt as he followed them mules. And I can still remember the shape they were and the angle they were. Everything about those footprints I remember. Amen. There's just certain things. I know you do the same thing I do at times. There's specific things that sticks in your mind about your daddy. And nobody else can even come close in our lives. And that's the way it should be with the Lord. We should follow His guidance. We should follow Him spiritually. Amen? Now my daddy, he, was, he loved the Lord and he believed in the Lord. But at times he fell by the wayside just like I do. At times he might have told me something that was wrong. At times he might have told me and not guided me in the right direction at times. But I want to tell you what, he was always there. Leading, guiding, and directing. Showing me the right way to go. Showing me the right way to go. How come we don't do that with God? How come we don't follow God? How come we don't say, okay, you're right. I'm wrong. You're the only one that can take care of business. Amen? There's no one like your daddy. Nobody. Just, just stop and think about it. There's nobody on the face of this earth like your daddy. I don't care who you are, what you've been through, who it is. It don't matter. You still have love in your heart for your daddy no matter how he treated you growing up. Now, we need to put all that aside and follow him and say, okay, let's check out the positive things that he told me and forget about, forget about all the negative. Because the positive things that he told you was coming. He was drawing his strength and knowledge from God when he did that. And I commend him for it. I pray, I, I, I say, Thank you, Daddy, for leading me in the right direction. Even at times when I thought you was coming against me, you was for me all along. It's the same way with God. We draw our strength from Him. We draw our knowledge from Him. But the Bible says we have to also be able to understand His will and His plan. Amen. And I know it's a big difference. We can go down this road about a godly father and a lost father. And, and But that love, that bond in his heart is true. Come on now. We have to love to know love. We got to understand love to be in love. And the only love we can draw, the under, there's no other love like God puts in us each and every day. But we throw it by the wayside at times. And we don't say, God is my Father in heaven at times, right? Because we're too busy saying, where's he at? Where's he at? I can perceive uh, one time in my mind that God, that Daddy let me down. But in turn, I learned so much from that. And still to this day, it haunts me. Of him saying no. No. But I was a better man for it. Because I got off my lazy butt and went to work. Excuse my French. But I got off my hind end, I went, to, I went to work. And I made something out of myself. All because he made me angry. All because he told me, Orvin, you're going to have to do it, son. I can't. And I'm not going to do it for you. I'll help you all I can, but you got to help yourself first before anybody can help you. Amen? I mean, he taught me so much sitting on that front porch down there on Water Road. We just sat out there, and he'd sit there, and he'd just, just, just talk. 
And I remember those days. And I remember at times what he said whenever I started a venture out on something that I know nothing about, but he's already been there. And he told me one time, hey man, it just sticks in my mind right now. He said, I'll never tell you anything that I hadn't lived. That way I know it's the truth. If I've done it, I'll tell you about it. If I hadn't, I'm not. And that's leading, guiding, and directing. Amen? Experience is what I'm saying this morning. And we forget at times our daddy got some experience. Because he's older than us. He's been through a whole lot more. And he understands more about life. He understands more about things to come. He understands what you, whether you in the rock, the, the, the soggy bottom or up on the mountaintop, he knows. Daddy's told me stories about things that he has went through growing up. And sometimes I just sit and want to cry about it. How can a man live that way? And still live to talk about it. How can he hug me and forget about the times that I went against him? Now don't get me wrong, my daddy was not perfect. But he was my daddy. And you only have one. There's only one. Amen. Well, we can say, well, when I, my wife got remarried and even my kids got a different daddy, it's, it don't work that way, people. Nobody on the face of this earth loves you like your true daddy. Nobody. Because it's instilled in us from God. Nobody on the face of this earth loves me like he does. There's no possible way. Now, a lot of times we start idolizing things other than God, like the preacher or the church. And that comes in between you, your love for God because we put more emphasis on something else. It don't matter how you've been treated. Let's wipe, push all that under the rug. Not how you've been treated, not how you was brought up. It's a new day. Let's wake up and say, I'm going to pick the good things that my father told me through the years and I'm going to go with them. The right things, the true things, the helpful things. I'm going to go with them and leave all the others by the wayside. My father does that to me each and every day. How come I can't do it? Whew, woo, I love that. How come I can't do it? He forgets everything and still puts his arms around me and hugs me. My son come in here this morning, first thing he did, walk over and hug my neck. And that's instilled in him. And God told him even before he got out of that truck what he was about to do. And he listened. Amen? He throwed everything else down. He didn't, he didn't remember the things of old that I did to him. He remembered that, he, he remembered that specific moment when he was able to go give his daddy a hug. That's a big deal, people. That's a big deal. I don't know about you, but I, but I can still smell the smell of my daddy. When he was sweating or when he was dressed up ready to go to church, I can smell it all. Well, he was mean to me. He hated me at times. He, are you kidding me? That's your daddy you're talking about. Your daddy loves you no matter what. Your daddy's going to be there no matter what. People say, well, there's a lot of deadbeat daddies out there. Well, let's forget about that at the Pacific time right now. Let's stop and say, I love my daddy. Have you ever thought about your daddy don't love you because you don't love him first? The Bible teaches us we need to love first. Not afterward. 
Not wait and see if he's going to love me. Not wait and see if he's going to come see me. Not waiting on him to come and hug my dick, but I need to go hug his. Amen? I get so aggravated sometimes. Kids say, Daddy, how come you don't never call me? Daddy, how come you don't never talk to me? Well, I tell you what, I don't think it's my place, our place. I think the children should call the daddy. I think the children to, to, should have something to do with their daddy. Amen? Make the first... The first choice is love. How can I be a Christian man and not love first? waiting on somebody to love me and then I love back. It's, man, we where would we be if we if he thought about us that way? He says I call. And Lord he's just waiting on your answer. Amen. So where do we get off thinking we're so high and mighty that we're above everybody else? And I call and not going to talk to them they talk to me. We're Christian people. We're supposed to be. We're supposed to put a guard down and go forth and say nothing but compassion. That's the way my father does. I don't care what I do against him. I don't care if I go against the grain. I don't care if I don't follow if I don't follow his will or follow his plan. If I Oh, I can do anything to him and he still comes back to me each and every time. And a godly father is that way. If you call yourself a Christian and you are a daddy, each and every time that child calls, be there. Each and every time he needs you, be there. I tell you what, I could pick mine out of a crowd, or I could have. There's no one else like him. And I know at times he's mean, <laughs> or I thought he would. At times I believe he whooped me just a little bit too hard. Then at times I think he'd whoop me hard enough. Yeah, back in the day, he'd he give me licks. Back in the day, it was, it was physical. And I want to tell you what. I may be old school. And I may be out of turn talking about this. But I don't think I am what God's telling me to say. Every now and again, they need to be a little dis physically disciplined. I ain't talking about uh, abuse. I'm talking about a little paddling on the booty every now and again. You know what I mean? Or just a slap on the hand to get their attention. I'm a better person for it. I'm going to tell you here today. My daddy could talk to me till I was, he was blue in the face. And I was thinking about everything under the sun but what he was saying. But buddy, at one time when he pulled that belt out of them loops in his pants and I could hear each and every one of them, when he was pulling that belt out of him, he got my attention fully then. Amen. Now sometimes he might have whooped me a little bit too hard. Sometimes I might have not agreed by what he was saying. But in the long run, let's think about the positive things and all that'll go to the wayside. Ain't that the way it is each and every day? If we forget about what happened, and put forth energy into the future where God's at, we, what we got to worry about? Nothing. Not a thing. Now, I'm standing up here before you today. Still hear my daddy's voice. Still hear my daddy saying no. Still hear my daddy say, okay, deal with it. And there is nothing that I want for this morning. I can't think of nothing. 
Nothing. Has there ever been a time in my life that I've been this way? No. Why is it now? Because of Him. Him. I know Him. We got the book. We got the Holy Spirit. We got everything. We got the blood of Jesus Christ on us each and every day. Why in the world can I go against something like that when He knows it all? And He's a truthful one. He is the Father of lights, the Bible says. Now you walk around each and every day trying to figure out if your daddy is a, is a, is a spiritual man or not. First and foremost, we need to look at ourselves and figure that out first. And then you won't have time to try to figure out where he's at with God. Amen? If he tells you something that goes against this grain, something that goes against this Bible, that'll give you a little more energy to get in the book and find out the truth. I tell you, I've been told a lot of things in my life that were wrong. How did I know they were wrong? Because the Bible says it's wrong. God says it's wrong. Jesus Christ says it's wrong. The Holy Spirit's telling me it's wrong. That's how I know it is wrong. Amen? Why in the world do we walk around each and every day trying to figure out what is right and what is wrong? You already know it. You were born with it. What's right and what's wrong. Either you're going to act like the devil or follow God, one of the two. With all this hatred going on in this world, I mean, people, kids are suing their father, suing their mother over stupid mess. I see it all the time. Suing them. About what? Money. Love is so far away from them that they can... God is so... That's the last thing they think of. And that should be the first thing they think of. Love. Put everything aside and draw strength from God to love one another as you do yourself, especially your mother and father. And the Bible says when you get married, you leave your mother and father, right? You leave them and go be with your wife and start a family and have a family to love. But before that time, you still have the memory of the love that your mother and father give to you and the knowledge. Whether they're spiritual or symbolic, whether they go to church or whether they don't, in the end, it's all about you. I hear so many people saying, well, I wouldn't raise up like that. It's time to change, people. I didn't, I didn't live in a, in a godly house. I wasn't raised up in a godly family. It's time to change. Why in the world are you still basking in the old days when the God says a new day is happening each and every day. And when you stand up before him, your daddy no, or your mama or, or whoever, or your wife is not going to come out behind that curtain or whatever and walk up there beside you and say, he's been a good old boy. He's my child. And I love him. Which they do. But they're not going to be able to help you. The time is right. Time is right right now to draw strength from the Father. Whether it's your daddy, your mother, your brother, your sister, or just a friend. God uses all. And I was reading the passage this morning. I don't know where I was. I don't remember exactly where it was at. But it I preached all this time about all you have to do is believe to get to heaven. And the Bible said, all will not go because they did not do my will and my plan. 
wow, that hit me like a ton of bricks. I don't know about you. So there's a whole lot more just to believe, right? No. That's all you have to do. You got to believe in something to do the will and do the plan. You just can't do, okay, I'm going to do the will and the plan. God, where are you at? Who are you anyhow? I got to find him. I got to talk to him. And you know it ain't hard to find because I bump into him every time I turn around. But anyway, <laughs> he is the one that I have to follow each and every day in order to lead my family. God, I don't, I don't know how else to spit it out. And God, well, verse 10 says on Amos him, chapter, I don't know how I got this, yeah, I do too. But anyway, Amos, chapter 3, verse 10 says, For they know not to do right. Saith the Lord, who stir up violence and robbery in their palaces. They do not know how to do right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know if you remember back when you was little, when you was little, you know, little enough, toddling around or whatever, and you stumbled all the time, and you fell, and you bumped your head on the coffee table, or whatever. <laughs> But each and every time something like that happens, what's the first instinct you had? I mean, crying to the top of your lungs, but you had them hands raised up right here. Come on. Help me. Pick me up. I need some love and I need some help. Don't we need to walk around like this all the time? Oh, I don't need to put my hands up. I don't need to put. Are you kidding me? If he tells me to do it, I'm going to get out there on top of that shed out there where the world can see it. I'm going to put my hands up because I'm not ashamed. That is being reverent to the Father. That is being, okay, I can't do it no more. Will you pick me up? If you are ashamed to raise your hands, you, you are in a sad place with God, I'm telling you. If you're afraid to sing the hymns of His mercy, That's his will. That's his plan. The Bible says we are going to worship him and sing hymns forever and ever in heaven. Have you thought about that? And the Bible also says lift up your holy hands. And I hear people saying, I feel I don't have to do that. What? I feel I, I don't have to talk about God all the time. I feel I'm not worthy enough to even talk about Him. And I'm sure not going to tell anybody else about Him because they're going to pick on me and they're going to tell me how wrong I am or they're going to tell me that I'm in, not in the right place. And you're just not having any fun today because all you talk about is God. But yet I want to go to heaven and sing praises and lift my hands up to him 24 hours. Uh, I know it won't be no time, but I'm just specifying. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you're too good to do it now? And you're going to heaven? And sit at the right hand of your father? Are you kidding me? I want to tell you what, right now, I lift my hands up to my daddy right now if I can see that's the place we need to be in. And that is called what? Be humble unto Him. Not ashamed of Him. He says, because you are ashamed of me here on earth, I will be ashamed of you in heaven. Mm -hmm. We got a lot, like Daddy used to say, to chew on and to think about. I know I went to see him in a, in a nursing home at times, and he'd tell me, just tell me something, or just tell me something about your work. Tell me something about what you did yesterday, because I want something to just sit around and just think on. Well, that's the way we need to do with God. Let him fill our cup up 
and then sit around and think about it. And then when he says, go, go. When he says, stop, stop. When he says, my will, my plan, do it. First instinct, first thing comes into your mouth, do it. Or your mind. And I'm going to research some more. And I don't know if it's in that Bible or not, but it's in me. And I have had very good outcomes by doing this specific thing. When the first... Okay, I'm ready to make a decision now. And when that first thing pops into my mind, that's God. That's God. And a lot of times, that's the reason we say, why don't he talk to me? The devil talks to me all the time. Because God's going to tell you one sentence. And the devil's going to tell you a million. Because he's going to try every way in this world to crush that first thought out of your mind. Think about it. Well, I'm going to go get up to bed. I'm going to Walmart. And I'm going to smile at everybody I see. I'm going to spread a little love of God all over. But I'm going to tell Luke here that I'm a Christian man. And I walk the Christian faith. And I go to church every Sunday. And I wear suit and tie when I preach. Oh, I'm just... And I'm going up there and I'm going to show. I guarantee you that adventure that you do in Walmart, somewhere along the line, the devil's going to make you mad. And you're going to lose all your joy. Because you didn't hear the first sentence out of God's mouth. You're too busy. We're too busy listening to everything else. That morning, I woke up by the voice of my, my daddy. And he said, get up, go to school. It was the first day of school, by the way. And I was so ashamed going to that school because I failed a lot of times. And yeah, I did. Because I wasn't interested in school. School was the first thing from my mind. Because back in the day, you could get a job anywhere. You were on a farm or doing something, you know. And, and I wanted to be and make something out of my life, but I don't want to go to school. That don't make a whole lot of sense, does it? But he told me, son, I can stand here and I can beat you out of that bed and make you go to school. But when you get up there, you're going to be mad at me and you're going to learn to do it. And sooner or later, you're going to ruin. So I'm just going to tell you, either you go to school or you got to go to work. So i done the latter. I went to work. And I have hated myself ever since. And I can blame it on being ashamed by being in a, in a grade with all the people who are younger than I am. Or I can justify it by saying that I wasn't smart enough. But with God, I have overcome all. Amen? And I guess, was it His will for me to go to school? And I abolished it, and I said, no. Is that the reason I wound up in the shape that I was in? Homeless a lot of time. Didn't know where my next meal was coming from. And Daddy used to say, you got to pay the piper after a while. Well, I paid him fully. Now, I'm not bragging about stumbling. But I'm here to tell you today, listen to the Father. And what comes out of your father's mouth, that it is, if it is straightforward from him or that book or the Holy Spirit, listen. Because your father can tell you things sometimes that's not true. As I've told my kids sometimes. Because I wanted to kind of put a little more onto it instead of what God had laid out. I want to put a little emphasis on it a little bit further and I want to... 
and I led them in the wrong direction. Because I didn't do like old Paul said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. I want to add some more on to it to make me look good. The first thought, think about it today. The first thought. Now y'all going to go against me. I know some of y'all going to say, nah, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Devil speaks first. Nah. What? The devil speaks first. The devil can take away, but God also adds. I'm giving you a little minute to go ahead and let that sink in. Because I believe it with all my mind, body, heart, and soul. Even when I was lost as a goose walking down the highway trying to get a ride to go somewhere. Remember back in the day, we'd stick that thumb out. That was the only way we had to travel on it. If you didn't have a car, stick that thumb out and they pick you up and take you to where you want to go. You ride on that thumb. I tell you, I rode many a mile on that thumb right there. But whose thought was it? Mine. Mine. Why? Because I didn't listen to the first thought that come out of his mouth, which was, I love you. I love you. I will take care of you. And the devil steady trying to shoot it down each and every time. The wife, my wife says it all the time. You can't unhear the truth. You can't unhear anything. Once it's said, it'll be in your mind forever. You can't unhear it. So why do we try to unhear God? Why? Listen to the devil and I'll hear God. I don't make a lot of sense, does it? The one that loves us, one takes care of us, one that is our Father of lights in heaven, but we go against Him. What have you got to lose this morning? Your pride? Throw the pride out the window and be a godly father. And love your children with God's love and instead of yours. Because you will know nowhere and you will never be able to attack yourself with your children unless you use His love to love them with. I kind of like we took my granddaughter up there at that dollar store the other day. So look at there, there's a jump rope. You want that? No, I don't think so. I can't do that, she said. And I got to look at that, and that thing's 16 foot long. A jump rope, 16 foot long. And I'm thinking, well, Lord, how in the world are we going to jump on that thing in there? You see what I'm saying? And she never once wanted it. She never once said, I want to try it. She was steady looking for something else. You know what I mean? So getting back to the jump rope, how come I just didn't go on it bad and make her do it? Because I didn't want the confusion to start with. And I knew she wasn't able to do it. But what did I need to go with? Don't even ask her. Just get it. There's so many times I've took her in a, or any kid in a dollar store or... or that ain't going to place a shop, by the way. But anyway, we'll buy things or go on to... Oh, I think they'd like that. Mm -hmm. And God said, well, get it. Well, I don't know. I don't know if they'd like it. You know, I have stood in that dead gun place up there in Walmart trying to pick out a car, and I'm in front of them cars for 30 minutes trying to figure out the right car to bring to somebody. I wanted to say the right thing. God takes you to them cards and he goes, the first one you look at, get it. The first one you walk at. Anything you do in this life, when he tells you, he's going to be first at. Right? Remember Job? Remember Job? If he hadn't listened to the devil, 
If he hadn't listened to all the people trying to tell him what to do, where would he have been right then? Get away from me, devil. Leave me alone, devil. That's all he had to say. But no, he's going to sit around on, the sack, on, his, on his tail and say, okay, bring it on. I can handle it. Bring it on. I can do it. Bring it on. I, anything you dish out, devil, I can handle it because I got God by my side. When all he had to do was help me. Help me. I stand up there, turn around, look at where the devil at. Where the devil at? Ruth, lift your holy hands up to God and say, the devil is gone and expired out of my life. And the Bible said, him or anybody else would be saved. If you think about, thought about that, I hear preaching to churches every Sunday just about talking about Job, talking about uh, what, the, what he went through and how he went through it. Why did he go through all that? He was upright and he loved God, but he still was going against God by listening to the devil. And look at the shape he got in before he come out on the other side and said, release me, devil. God's in charge. Do we do that each and every day? I tell you what, I do. Because I'm not perfect, only he is. But as soon as I say, God, I can't do it no more. The veil is torn. The Holy Spirit is in charge then. So go with your first door. thought. Go with it. And see how your life pans out. Now I'm going to say this one more before I close. I know it's getting late. What I'm saying here this morning, I got a little side job going on, even though I'm tired, even though I, I'm, and I, I play the stock market. I call it a job. Sometimes it's a failure, but I go both ways, you know, a lot of times. But you know, each and every time when I open that up and I pull that old streamer up, and I mean, them stocks are going by there, 97 mile an hour, and I don't know which one to buy, and I don't know which one to sell, and I don't know which what to do. I just throw my hands up. And he says, buy that one. Well, that old man on TV said not to buy that right now, Lord. That man on TV said, you better not sell that. It's going through the roof. Well, let me tell you what. That man telling you, he's got some stock up in that company. Or he wouldn't be telling you how good he did. So what do I need to do? God, this is yours. God, tell me what to do. And when you hear him, speak, listen, and do. Because that is the will and plan for you on that specific day. He says, follow my will, follow my plan. Well, how in the world are going to do that when they don't even listen to him? Because we got so many other things to add on to that talking about it's wrong. I'm telling God, the one that throws the stars in the sky, that something ain't right about this situation, and you shouldn't be telling me that. Listen to the Father. He's got a whole heck of a lot more uh, uh, experience than I do. Listen to your Father. It's the same way we're going to church up there. Listen to the preacher. Does the preacher in the pulpit tell the truth all the time? Ooh. Does he? No, because he's human. No, because a lot of times his mind ventures away from God. God says, speak this, and I speak something else. Because this might sound a little better than what God's telling me this morning. I woke up this morning like a lot of mornings. I don't even have a clue about what I'm going to preach about today. I don't even know what to say, God. He said, that's where I want you at. I want you in a place till you don't know. Lose your mind. Lose your intentions. 
Lose everything about you before you get up and speak after me. Because I got something to say to the people. You've had a chance all week long, but this is my time. It should be the same way when we go to the Lord in prayer. Give Him your undivided attention all the time. Well, I can't do that. I'm human. Well, we have justified and played that heart for so long until we truly believe that. I can't do it. I can't do it. You told your stars in the sky. I can't do it. You made the waters part. I can't do it. Are you kidding me? I can't do it. When the Bible truly says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And I can't do it. Who are you? The only reason you can't do it is because you're trying to do it. The only reason you are falling or failing is because your fault, not his. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never not be by your side. What part of that am I not understanding? The person you listening to, are they able to go up and grab a star? Ask yourself, this person I'm listening to, is that straight from God through that person? And that goes for daddies too now. Are we leading our children in the right direction? He asked us that as fathers each. I don't care. My son's a, been on this earth a pretty good while now. But I still see him as a little toddler running around throwing his hands up. And that's what our father does each and every day, right? And as long as your kids are sucking wind, or are you sucking wind, you're going to think that specific thing. They still my little children. They still, I'm still trying to raise them. I'm still trying to be there for them. And it's okay to throw your hands up and praise the Almighty God. Thank y'all for coming, but the Lord's day of the Lord. Amen. Thank you.